Hello once again folks, Jose Rodriguez here. I have a video channel that has just over 65,200 and something subscribers. So that's not too bad. I've been at this for several years. I also have a Facebook group with over 9,000 uh, members uh, all about photo printing. And people sometimes join before they get involved with this craft hobby job whatever you want to call it it could be any of those categories depending on how you approach it but you know they sometimes at least i tell them please become educated before you get into this because there's a lot of little hurdles that you need to jump over i spent gosh 20 years learning all the tricks and making a thousand mistakes and I mean fatal mistakes and finally reaching a point where I am at today I still make mistakes folks don't think I'm perfect at all I still make mistakes and I consider myself an advanced photo printer so learning the process it is imperative so what does that entail in the darkroom we shot with film we developed the film we took that negative to an enlarger, which was a projector, projected that negative onto a piece of paper that's photosensitive paper for a certain amount of time. Color was even more advanced. Let's just stay with black and white. And then you take that paper that has been exposed into the tray of developer and under a safe light, you watch it develop and it's magical. You see the image coming from nothing to a full image. So after that, you go through several other baths, a fixing solution, and then a very thorough washing to remove all of those chemicals out of those wooden fibers. Basically, it was paper fibers from trees. So, and then you dry it, and then you can display it any way you want. Well, now we're getting into the digital world, and that involves cameras and such. Yeah, you don't longer have to expose yourself to stinky chemicals, and that's that's a good thing. But anyway, so now you have a file. You load it in your computer, and you look at it. And remember, the, the more you look at your monitor, the less you're going to actually see that the monitor is displaying your colors incorrectly. It's just going to, your brain is going to fool you. So when you get into photo printing, serious photo printing, you want to make sure that you have a method to calibrate your monitor to a proper condition. A proper condition. That means that it displays values to you, to your eyeballs, accurately. The correct density, not too bright, not too dark. That's a ballpark figure because it depends on your room's illumination that you work under. I work, I look behind me, it's dark, and this is daytime. So this is how I work. So I have my brightness turned down to the point where anything that is black, those, those light emitting diodes, they're not emitting anything. And the next level up is emitting a little bit of light. So that is perfect. I don't want my black to be emitting anything. Okay. In order to do that, I have to have a darkened room. So that's, that condition now has been met. Now you go ahead and you calibrate your colors, RGB, which is what your monitor is emitting to you, red, green, and blue. They have to be set so that it does not change hue from the blackest nothing all the way to white, red, green, and blue. That's called linear neutrality. So once that is done, again, during that process, contrast, Luminosity is also set correctly. Sometimes you can manually adjust that yourself. I recommend that you do that and then print something that you have edited on your monitor and see if your printer actually produces a luminosity match. Keep in mind, this is backlit, bright, stunning. Prints are not bright and stunning, okay? Reflective light hits it, bounces back to you. Light hits it, it reflects back to you, 
and that's what you see. This is being backlit. It's it's going to be twice as bright and gorgeous and just clear. Nothing like paper at all. All right. So you want to get a close match, as close as possible. So the only way to do that is keep adjusting that brightness level through your calibrating software. Or you're going to have to invest in a spectrophotometer or a colorimeter in order to proceed with this. That's an investment no one ever gets told about. And so it comes as a shock. So keep aware that you're not only going to spend a fair amount of money for a good printer that is ranked as a photographic printer, not just an all-in-one for office type work, but a photographic printer with enough colors, you're also going to need a calibrating piece of hardware. This is the old Color Monkey right here. This used to run 500. This is the i1 Pro 2 over here. I cannot pull it too much. And that was $1,500 but it is a professional level calibrator meant for the most advanced work out there. So I have calibrated my monitor, fine, now I'm ready. Again, this is, this is before I even start, I need to study and learn all of this stuff. And YouTube is a treasure trove of information, although some of it is a little iffy and you have to be able to sift through the BS and the truth, okay? What I am giving you here is the truth, no BS allowed. So what's next? Well, editing software. What's the best out there? Of course, Photoshop, Lightroom. There are others that you can also use. Printing software, I use QMH Ultimate. Why? Because it's just utterly awesome, okay? But let's not even worry about editing yet. I buy myself a printer. Behind me is the 8550. In the other rooms, I have my big photo printers, the, the, the big boys. Uh, they're not huge capacity, but they're the high-end type printers. And now I want to print. So I would need to determine through a preliminary test. I've already done the installation and also check what was perfect. Head alignment came out great. Pro 1000. I can go ahead and actually calibrate it internally so that it outputs as the factory intended it to do so. Uh, of course, because it's a mass-produced item, it's going to be fluctuations in output um, accuracy. So you have to internally calibrate it, and you're allowed to do that in the printer itself, which is absolutely awesome. I wish every single printer allowed you to do that. So anyway, so that is ready to go. Now I want to print something to determine without any bias from my monitor here, whether I calibrated it perfectly well or it's not even calibrated yet, I'm going to load the standard evaluation image. Boom, I open it up, file, print. I find my printer, I have some ProLuster, I load it and I tell it, the driver, to control color. Then I choose ICM as the color mode. That's going to take that job, send it to the printer, and it's going to utilize, guess what, which, which profile? The ProLuster profile, because I told it to use ICM. In other words, again, I tell the printer to control color, the driver that is, and I tell in the driver to use ICM color mode. And then I'm using ProLuster. I actually did also use ProLuster, load ProLuster into the printer, Boom, ICM will immediately match that job to the ProLuster ICC profile that lives in my computer. I look at it and it's going to be perfect. It's going to be as perfect as you possibly imagine. You look at it and you go, wow. Under regular lighting, good bright lighting, and then you bring it over and, oh shoot, there's a mismatch. That means your monitor is not calibrated. You better calibrate it because why are you going to edit in an inaccurate model. If I was taking temperature readings in very important places in an industrial environment and I need to be exact to half a degree, my tool better be absolutely perfectly calibrated. Otherwise, I'm going to give false information to whoever needs it. So this has to be perfectly calibrated. 
once you get that to match your print that's it now you have they're shaking hands this matches this and this matches that now i'm allowed to edit now your life is just easy because now you're not going to be having to make these post editing adjustments because your print is coming out a little bit magenta and here it looks correct that's because this was off and you made it magenta by editing it so that it looked good in your erroneously reporting monitor you see you made the print too dark too light too magenta too green too yellow too blue whatever because what you saw you were trusting and you made adjustments that's what happened the printer has no idea you did that the printer receives the information and produces a print how do we know it's doing a great job because we looked at that standard image and it looked fantastic simple you see what i mean so that's how we get to the point where click print oh it came out yep it's great i knew it i knew it was going to be great now what other fallacies can you experience the number one of course is the too dark a print result that's because your monitor is too bright and you made it darker so that it would look good luminosity has to be turned down so that you don't do that so you don't darken your image unnecessarily just to make it look good in your super bright monitor out of the box they're all way too bright way too bright and way too contrasty so you need to make those adjustments using software again not the buttons in front that doesn't work software and a calibrator okay once you get that to match your standard image now i can edit my images i'm practically done at this point okay so what's the other thing a little thing called double profiling and that means that i tell my application to control color in this case i choose the proper matching icc profile but then if i go to the driver color controls in the driver have not been turned off both of them cannot be controlling color either the driver can control color and it better be a canon printer with canon paper or an epson printer with epson paper and then i choose icm as the color mode and that will automatically like i said match it to the correct icc profile for the paper that i use canon or epson but i'm using third-party papers so i need to manually pick my icc profile say in photoshop and then i have to tell the driver to not control color well i have to do that manually it will not do it for me automatically i have to do that manually so how can i basically eliminate 100 percent eliminate the possibility of double profiling q image that's it q image will not allow you to double profile or if you own a mac i believe you also cannot double profile on purpose so that's the way to go. Double profiling will result in an oversaturated, awful, awful looking print. That's the way it is. So those are really all the things you have to worry about when you want to consider doing your photo printing at home. So you've been shooting photographs all your life and now you want to get away from, you know, looking at things on a tablet or, uh, you know, iPhone or iPad. You want to begin to make print something tangible you can hold in your hands, show off to people. You want to sign it. You want to put one slash 100 or 27 slash 100 and sell them at the Saturday market in your local town. Then you have to learn the requirements that you need for consistent output. Again, your output will be so consistent. It's going to be boring, actually. It's going to be so boring because you will no longer have to worry about things. That's the way it is. Speaking of QImage, while I was recording this, I got the notice. What time is it? It's 5.02. So at 5 o'clock, I get all my printers to print a purge image. That keeps the printers happy. 
That's another thing. When you get your printers, they are not to be ignored. You must use them. Certain printers require different frequency of printing, or they will then run a cleaning cycle, or they will become clogged and not tell you they are clogged, and then you proceed to print something, and you will get streaks because ink is not flowing through certain nozzles. You will get blank streaks. So Canon printers sort of prevent you from having that experience because they are going to run a cleaning cycle prior to any print that you send if you've waited a certain number of days or even hours. So keep all of this in mind. I don't mean to scare everybody from ever considering photo printing. It's just that there are things you need to learn and utilize and bring into your workflow so that you have a successful printing. Let's see what we got here. This is what we get. You see that? This set of lines is created in QImage according to the colors that your printer contains. So CMYK is a normal set of colors. Some printers will have red, will have blue, will have violet, will have orange, green, and so forth. So you can custom create these perch images that then are scheduled automatically through QImage to be produced at a certain time every one day or every two days or every week or whatever. This one here does not require daily printing, no. You can go a whole week without any issues. But printers like the Pro 1000, you need to use them pretty much daily or you're going to be wasting more ink having it prep itself before it prints than it actually uses to create that precious print of yours. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. So if you print every day with it, prints that are going to be valuable that you can sell, then get a Pro 1000. Otherwise, do not. Just don't. It, it's going to drive you nuts. Again, professional photographer producing work daily pro 1000 yes amateur at home printing whenever you feel like it 8550 that's all you need so i'll leave you with that and again hopefully you will have a successful and extremely enjoyable adventure with photo printing of your images that you created yourself i don't care how you created them but now you can actually print them and have something beautiful and tangible to show people and they will be amazed at what they see all right thank you again don't forget to subscribe share and like and as always happy printing everybody bye bye